Alors, sans plus tarder, allons-y avec la cinquième présentation ce matin euh, qui s'intitule « Strengthening a Collaborative Ocean Mapping Research and Education Network for Canada ». Notre présentateur de ce matin est M. Ian Church. Ian, I didn't receive your uh, bio, so I will ask you to uh, present yourself, please. And uh, you can start right now. I see that you have uh, already shared your screen, so go ahead. Uh, thanks, Richard. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, Ian Church. I'm an associate professor in the Geodesy and Geomatics Engineering Department at the University of New Brunswick, uh, where I run the Ocean Mapping Group. Um, so that's probably enough of a bio, but uh, I, uh, I appreciate the chance to present at this conference. And I think it actually works out well mm -hmm. to be presenting this topic at the end of the conference uh, because This week, we've seen that there's incredible capacity and capability to do ocean mapping related research and education uh, here, here in Canada. And, you know, it's something we've known about, I think, for a long time, uh, but maybe haven't taken sort of full advantage of. So <clears throat> to try to help that, uh, this presentation focuses on an effort to bring together Canadian researchers and educators to build a, a greater sort of capability to enhance ocean mapping in, in Canada. So this was recognized, as I said, this has been recognized for a long time, but specifically it was recognized that this capability existed as sort of a few individuals at a whole bunch of institutions across the country. Uh, probably back after a, a, one of the Canadian Hydrographic Conferences in 2016. And after that, it was decided that we should try to get together and build a network of individuals that have common interests that could actually work together to enhance this capability or to build on the capability of the individual institutions. So in 2016, the Comren network was founded and, and COMREN stands for the Canadian Ocean Mapping Research and Education Network. And you know, you may have seen the, uh, the logo in uh, some of the background slides and the, the information for this, for this conference. So COMREN is, is essentially a, a group of individuals or at different organizations across the country that are trying to work together to better ocean mapping. So what, what is COMREN? Well, COMREN itself is not a legal entity. It's not a, um, it, it's not a group that's based on some specific funding uh, or anything like that. It's just a network of individuals who are active in ocean mapping research and education here in Canada. We have common interests, We have a common objectives uh, and we want to work together to enhance those objectives. So it's sort of held together by a, a memorandum of understanding or an MOU, which I'll talk about a little bit more on the next slide. But it, it basically provides some sort of loose guidelines for what is required to be part of this, sort of this membership or of this network. And the main goals of the network are just to work together, to try to help, help each other, to try to improve on the capabilities of the individual institutions to build more and stronger capacity in ocean mapping research and education across Canada. So the MOU is, uh, you know, became kind of a, a, a legal document, I guess, not, not legally binding, but a lot of uh, sort of legal language after it went through our universities. But it, it fundamentally says that we as a group of like-minded individuals want to work together and be active participants in ocean mapping research and education opportunities. 
that we realize that working together will be stronger than trying to do things on our own. So by joining the membership, the members commit to participating, to being active, and that really hasn't been a problem so far, which is fantastic, to work together to sort of view the vision of research in the future, to build scientific capability and educational capacity um, for all of the members together. So this was signed and agreed to in late 2016, early 2017, and really started the sort of Comren movement here, here in Canada. So the Comren organizations sort of strategically go all across the country uh, and cover from both the West and East coasts. On the East coast, we have the Marine Institute uh, under Memorial University. We have the Nova Scotia Community College, UNB, where I am, CIDCO, the Université de Laval, Université de Ottawa, York University, and the British Columbia Institute of Technology, or BCIT. So you notice that we have about four universities, three colleges, and a nonprofit organization in this mix uh, that provides a lot of unique sort of capacity to the network. The network also relies on working with the Canadian Hydrographic Service specifically, although they're not part of the MOU, but we do work with them uh, all the time. They're all, at all of our meetings and with Natural Resources Canada. So those are our two main federal partners right now. Uh, we also have a number of sort of observer members that come and join our meetings uh, from Dalhousie and uh, soon uh, CGQ and others. So we're, we're not limiting ourselves to these organizations, it's just this is the structure that we have right now. So, in 2017, Paul Brett gave a great presentation about the Comren members at the U.S. Hydrographic Conference in Galveston. And I thought I'd sort of bring up his slides again, just uh, as small pictures to kind of show, you know, all of the capacity that these different organizations have. So what's unique about Comren is we have at least eight groups here. Uh, who are all have unique capability in this ocean mapping space. So we have groups that have incredible equipment that, that is available to use with in collaborative projects. We have groups that have graduate students and postdoctoral fellows that can be that can be uh, worked with. We have groups with software development capabilities. We have educational programs that have incredible education programs. Some uh, recognized by the IHO and others. So what's unique about the members of Comren is there's very little competition. Uh, there's actually, it, it, it's an incredible group that work very well together because we all build on each other's strengths. And on top of that, we do have a, uh, we do have a special uh, senior advisor, uh, Mr. Denny Haynes, who has actually been uh, incredibly helpful in sort of keeping us all glued together. Uh, so I, I, we really appreciate Denise's help with that. And to lead the group, we have, we've had annual chairs right now. I'm, I'm the chair in the past. It's been uh, uh, Nicolas Sub, Paul Brett, Craig Brown. And we've, decided that actually a, a one-year chair is not enough and then we've started to expand that to a three-year into a three-year position so we could have more um, con continuation in developing projects. So we've actually seen Comrade members represented quite well in Comrade presentations this week, um, sort of hidden behind the scenes. I won't list these but uh, if you've attended the conference, you know, most of the presentations this week, you've probably seen a Comrade member a Comrade collaboration or a Comrade project being highlighted. So to build these collaborations, 
we have monthly meetings. We meet for an hour once a month on Zoom. Uh, we, we started doing this before we before we had to um, over a year ago. But it's really been a fantastic way just to get a uh, sort of casual update on how things are going, what projects are in progress. We discuss opportunities for new projects as opportunities come up. We can discuss those in our in our meetings, in our virtual meetings and then try to act on them. And we can assign different people to work on different projects. And it's really been a fantastic way to build these collaborations. So we've had excellent participation in our monthly meetings. We usually uh, have so much to discuss, we can't finish everything. But we also have, a, or at least plan to have an annual meeting where we can get together and, and discuss things in person. And we did, last opportunity that we did that with was at the Canadian Hydrographic Conference in Quebec. Uh, and we hope again to do that again soon. So as we look at Comran going forward, uh, with the help of uh, Denny Haynes, we were able to come up with some sort of a strategic direction for the next 10 years, which is sort of guiding our vision for going forward. Um, ideally, what we what we want is for Canada to be seen as an international leader in ocean and coastal mapping research and education. And the way that our universities and colleges and funding structures are built, it becomes very difficult for one organization to take that leadership role for the country. And it's probably not the right way to do it anyway. So what we were trying to do is say, let's work together We'll build on each other's strengths, we'll enhance each of the individual organizations and collectively show that Canada is doing this in a collaborative way. So we're going to retain the same mission that we've had for the past five years, and that's to build ocean research programs, ocean education opportunities, and improve technology transfer to industry and to, uh, to, to operational federal departments as well. And the big idea behind all of this is that we want to not just have individual researchers focusing on small problems, we want to get researchers together to try to accomplish some more grand challenges. You know, what are the big challenges that we're facing in this field and how can we improve those by working together? So moving forward, our objectives are, are, are pretty vague, but that's good because it leaves us open to, up to connecting to lots of different opportunities. So we want to continue to deliver high quality research and education programs with collaborators. And that's the key is for a common project to exist, we need to have collaborators. We need to have more than one institution working together or it kind of defeats the purpose of the networked approach. And of course, we want to maintain and grow the network going forward. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So I wanted to highlight a few of the sort of projects that we've been doing under the Comran umbrella so far uh, in the past five years. And this will just highlight a few of them. Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of things going on, but uh, I wanted to, to highlight a few. So the first one that uh, I was very impressed with was the Hydrographic Survey International Summer School that was put on and organized by Sylvie Danielle at uh, the Université de Laval. And this was done in 2019. It brought in different Comran members to teach a, a, a quite varied classroom of students, people from industry, there was graduate students, uh, undergraduate students, all just wanting to learn more about hydrography. And it brought these people together with, a, with unique lecturers from different organizations within Comran and some outside of Comran to talk about the elements of, of hydrographic surveying. So there was folks discussing uh, datums, 
So it's hydrospatial integration of data, errors, operations of LIDAR systems, capability of, of LIDAR and laser scanning, multi-beam system theory, and, and so on. And, and it was a really unique experience um, that involved a week of classroom training and a week of field, uh, field ex uh, exposure. So it was a perfect kind of short course for those who want to better understand how ocean mapping can help their individual research projects or fields. The other unique thing about this summer school was it was that it was bilingual. Uh, it was hosted in Quebec. There was presentations in English and French, and uh, perhaps that limited our our, our enrollment. But it uh, it uh, we actually had to turn people away at the end. So it was uh, it was a fantastic experience. So as I said, this was a, a Comran project. We had uh, collaborators from uh, different Comran institutions working together to deliver this and uh, uh, watch out for a potential 2021 edition of this uh, conference or this uh, class. We're also trying to build student internship opportunities to try to get students in the field. Uh, we've been doing this uh, a bit already with uh, the Coast Guard ship Amundsen and uh, working with the Arctic Net funding program. Uh, so together with the Marine Institute, University of Laval, Natural Resources Canada, and Amundsen Science, we've been trying to get students on these mapping vessels. Uh, that's something we were going to try to do more in 2020, uh, but uh, obviously that was it was very difficult to get students into the field, and it still is, but it's something we'll keep working on. And one of the initiatives that I'm sort of most proud of uh, that Comran has accomplished is, is actually obtaining funding for students to travel to the hydrographic conferences. And this has been an incredibly rewarding program. So we've been able to attain funding from industry, from the federal government through DFO to get students from their home institutions across the country to the Canadian Hydrographic Conference. And members like uh, Sean Galway at BCIT helped organize a student day in 2018 at the Hydrographic Conference where this room of students who came from across the country got to learn more about ocean mapping and what the opportunities are for them after they get out of school, which was, which was fantastic. So those students, this is only a handful of them here, this provided a very unique experience that really opened their eyes to the world of ocean mapping. So in this picture alone, we have, I think, seven individuals from UNB who were students at the time. Uh, two of them are working with the Hydrographic Service. Two of them are working with QPS. One of them work, is working with Teledyne Keras. One is working with Public Works doing, sur doing hydrographic surveys. And one is a consultant working for a, a number of software companies. So without this opportunity, these windows and doors may not have opened for them. We were able to do it again in 2020. We got at least 28 students to the Hydrographic Conference in Quebec, probably more. Uh, funding graciously provided by Department of Fisheries and Oceans and the Canadian Hydrographic Association. And again, it was a, an enormous opportunity for students to come together, meet each other, and again, see these opportunities uh, in, in ocean mapping that they may not have been aware of. Ian, two minutes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So. On the research side, we've had a, a lot of successful projects. We've had three that have already completed uh, with a total value of over a million dollars. And we have six, at least six projects, I'm probably forgetting some, that are ongoing uh, in the research side of things. And I'll just highlight two of the projects that uh, we've completed so far. One was sort of a precursor to Julian's presentation this morning. You can see him uh, standing here in the orange suit. But this was working with Inuit communities in the north to develop capacity to, to map their own waters. And this was an excellent collaborative project because it involved training, data acquisition, processing data, and visualization. And it got funded through Fisheries and Oceans Canada and MyTax, which was, which was great. Another one was working and led by uh, Craig Brown at the Nova Scotia Community College, now Dalhousie, 
uh, looking at developing benthic habitat maps for the Bay of Fundy. So this involved underwater imaging, backscatter and bathymetry processing to come up with species distribution models and ocean oceanographic modeling. So the future, where are we going? Uh, well, we talked about our strategic directions, uh, but just to highlight a few of those, you know, we want to continue to grow our network and the capacity of the network. We want to be seen as a leader, not just in Canada, but internationally as a group focused on ocean mapping research and education that doesn't sit at one institution, but rather lifts up all the institutions involved. As uh, JC mentioned in the last presentation, where we have organ groups within our network that are, have their category B, we have two applications in for category A programs, and we look forward to hearing those results. Of course, this is not without its challenges. Uh, having a network of individuals is a hard thing to support. Uh, we're still looking for how our network grows and how we make sure that our network is sustainable for the future, including how do we provide funding for administrating the network and sort of ha acting as a central hub to organize everyone together. Of course, the logistics for educational field opportunities becomes a challenge, um, not just because of COVID, but also because of the vast size of Canada. And we're continuing to explore ways to better connect with our federal partners to enhance their programs as well. So in summary, Comran has a primary goal to basically work together to create a network that's stronger than the sum of its parts. We're building on the incredible strengths that we have already to enhance the Canadian ocean mapping capacity uh, nationally and internationally. And we look forward to continuing to work with federal, provincial, and industry partners. So with that, I'd be happy to take any questions.